abortion, suicide, murder, genocide, euthanasia from beginning to end, from A to Z, from first to last, from infancy, from zygote on, death holds sway in the culture of death. And what is the antidote? What's the answer? Life. Life is the antidote for death. And that is why God, the eternal word, became man and dwelt among us. Jesus assumed a human nature, the one who is existence itself, the one who is life itself, assumed a human nature to endow that nature with the power to overturn the works of death. That's the work of the Savior. That's the work of the family. That's the work of the Christian. That's your work. That's my work. And make no mistake about it, we got our work cut out for us. We are in a struggle, a life and death struggle. And with each passing day, the struggle becomes more violent and more evident. Let those who have eyes see. Let those who have ears hear. With each passing day, the works of death and corruption become more evident. How many abortions do you need to see it? How many Enrons and Worldcoms do you need to believe it? How many scandals do you need? To understand that the works of death are very much in evidence in our society and in our world. The sanctity of human life. What's our place in it all? What do we do? How do we do it? How does it affect the family? Well, the family, the garden of holiness, is a garden of life. The same God who is holiness itself is life itself. The same God in whose image we are created is the one who endows us with grace. That's what allows us to do his work. That same God endows us with life and the power to do something in this battle between the forces of life and death. Jesus then turned to the Jews who had believed in him. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They argued with him then. They said, oh, we're disciples of Abraham. We've never been in bondage to anyone. What do you call Egypt? They were in bondage to Egypt. Well, they lied. We've never been in bondage to anyone. Descendants of Abraham, oh, yeah, right. If you were descendants of Abraham, you wouldn't be trying to kill me right now. Why can you not understand what I say? I'll tell you why. You can't understand what I say. You can't bear to hear my word because you are not of God. Boy, Jesus is talking to the religious leaders of his day, the Pharisees. And he's saying, you're not of God. Can you imagine how much gall Jesus had? Can you imagine how, how oh, 
the guts, the moral backbone, well, of course, he had divine strength in his, in his human nature was filled with the power from his union with divinity. He's, he's truly God as well as truly human. But grace is what helps us to be like him. But imagine that, unprecedented. He stood before the, all the religious leaders and says, you're not of God. You're of your father, the devil. And your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer. Murderer. What's a murderer do? Takes life. Kills. Your father was a murderer from the beginning. He has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks according to his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies, a murderer from the beginning. Note the connection between truth and life. Note the connection between lies and death. We live in a culture of death because we have countenanced and tolerated a culture of lies. We have been confused and duped. We have been seduced by the wordsmiths. Jesus said, say yes when you mean yes, and no when you mean no. Many of the wordsmiths and pseudo-scholars would have you believe that there is no black and white, that everything is gray, that the truth and lies are not so clearly defined, that there are no moral absolutes. They would have you believe that. They are liars the spawn of the father of lies. And the results of their work is death. Lies beget death. What is the genesis, the origin of the culture of death? Lies. Lies. The lie that it is not really a human being in the womb. I once was in, I will use a polite term, I was once in a debate. I could call it a dog fight, but I won't. I was once in a debate with a radical feminist, a Catholic, nun, radical feminist who supported a woman's right to an abortion. Oh, there are many Catholics, maybe a majority, who believe a woman has a right to artificially contracept and who even has a right, under certain circumstances, some might say, for an abortion. No such thing. Can you be Catholic and hold those positions? No. You can't. Can you be Catholic and hold the position that if it's in accord with your conscience, you can take the birth control pill, use condoms, or even have an abortion? No. What conscience? Well-formed conscience? Malformed conscience? Dead conscience? No such thing as conscience in a vacuum. Conscience has to be formed, and it has to be formed to the objective norm of church teaching, the truth, which is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you think after 2,000 years, and more than that, because back into Jewish history, history of the chosen people, do you think that after all that, now all of a sudden, God changes the rules, or that we've become so much more enlightened now, that now truth is a lie and lies are truth. Do you think now all of a sudden evil has become good and good evil? 
that transposition of the poles of reality, that turning upside down good and evil. Like in Shakespeare, when the horrid sisters chanted, fair is foul and foul is fair. That could be the battle cry of the liberal mind today. Good is evil and evil is good. Oh, sexual openness. We have to be tolerant. They say you must be tolerant. Tolerance is a good thing. We must be tolerant. We must be tolerant of all good things. If God created a man black, that's good. If he created him white, that's good. God created him. It's got to be good. We've got to be tolerant of the entire spectrum of good. I've got to tolerate every good thing, but I don't have to tolerate evil. There is no such thing. Then you have stepped outside the circumference of the authentic definition of tolerance, and you have entered the realm of permissiveness. And there is a radical and essential difference between tolerance and permissiveness. Tolerance, the acceptance of a wide spectrum of the good. Permissiveness, you cross the line. When I begin to accept evil, that's not tolerance, that's permissiveness. And that act in itself is immoral and begins to facilitate and enable evil. I become a collaborator in evil. Those who think they are enlightened, far-sighted, up-to-date, progressive, who promote alternative lifestyles, who say that a woman has a right to choose. Choose what? It's the only case in all of language that I know of where you don't complete the sentence. <laughs> a woman has a right to choose. Choose what? Hey, freedom's a good thing. Once again, be careful about definitions. Be careful that the wordsmiths don't seduce you out of the truth into a lie. Freedom's good. They say, oh, you're against freedom. Nope. I am 100% in favor of freedom. Just like I'm 100% in favor of tolerance. I am a tolerant person. I am not a bigot. I believe men and women, all races, should be equal, and treated equally, and loved equally. I believe all that. I believe in tolerance. I do not believe in permissiveness. It ushers the way in for a whole host of evils. Freedom. I'm all for it. Authentic freedom. What's freedom? Human freedom, what is that? Being able to do whatever you want to do? No. You say, prove it. Prove it biblically. Okay. I just read it from Genesis. You can partake of all the trees in the garden, but you can't touch that one. Freedom. Very broad, but it has limits. And the limits are laid down by God. Authentic freedom is not being able to do whatever you want to do. It is not. Because if, were, if it were, before I leave in a couple of hours, I shall steal the best truck in the parking lot. I'm free. It's a free country, isn't it? No, you don't know that you can't do that. That's not freedom. That's license. Aha. Uh -huh. You're very smart. Exactly. And so be careful. Freedom? Yes. License? No. A woman has a right to choose. Choose what? 
Anything she wants?